it's been a while. Had to take a break, you know. Doing YouTube every week is a bit of a chore, especially if you have a full-time job. So yeah, now I'll make content whenever I feel like it. And my door is still open. Let me go and close that. Finally, after like two months of doing absolutely nothing, I got a bit stressed out publishing YouTube videos every week. And now with work and everything, I just didn't feel like it. It takes forever to edit. Uh, yeah, and just getting up and doing it every week takes its toll. So yeah, now I'll post things whenever I feel like it. Hopefully it will be a bit more relaxed, kind of like this. Uh, yeah, and let's see if this setup works. For you guys i feel like sitting on the couch makes me feel better <laughs> this is my little hangout space uh put up some nice guitars i have the guitar rack right behind the camera basically off to the side here uh, and i feel like this is the place this is the place to uh, talk about guitars so what have i been doing now i've been trying to find another jazz master actually um Mainly because I kind of miss having a traditional Jazzmaster. Because this one, it's really special and it's not traditional in any sense of the word. It's a hardtail with a bus stop with P90s actually. It's P90s in a Jazzmaster housing from Lawlers. Sound great, but I still feel like I need a more traditional Jazzmaster. So, uh, I tried to look for one and it's a bit problematic with Fender right now. So let's talk about that. So basically you have three variations of the Jazzmaster you can find, right? You have the cheaper ones in the Squire range and you have the higher ones, the American ones, of course, the more expensive ones, the ones you probably should get if you want any type of value really. Um, and then the ones that have this awkward placement now in the middle of the pack, the Mexican ones. The problem with Mexican ones right now, I feel, is that the prices are extremely expensive for what they are. And when it comes to, you know, Jazz Master players, they often most of them want something more traditional. And with the Mexicans right now, the Pau Ferro fretboards are just not cutting it. It's a bit of a problem, actually. Specs-wise, I actually like a lot of Mexican ones, and I personally haven't played any of them, actually, until yesterday when I went out to see if Pau Ferro really was as bad as people were telling me. Basically, what people were saying was that, well, the first thing, it's really light, it looks dry, right? Yeah, I can agree that it looks dry, just from looking at pictures and even seeing them in stores, actually. People also said that the texture is rough. Uh, when I played them, I didn't really notice. Didn't really notice that part. It felt like, uh, not really like rosewood, but it wasn't, it's harder than Indian Laurel, but to me, Indian Laurel is nicer. Just the looks. It's a bit softer than uh, Pau Ferro for sure. Uh, but I'm fine with that. It's just mainly the color. That's the big problem for me. But playing one, I play the Ventura, 60s modified Jazzmaster, I think, uh, and a Jaguar as well. I played those two, and I mean, Powerfire felt pretty good to me, but I couldn't get past the looks, actually. It's just for the color schemes and everything, you just need that dark chocolatey brown rosewood look, right? I would have wished Fender would have, you know, uh, stained them or something, but then when I basically said maybe you should stain them all my friends said oh they're difficult to stain they're really dry and they crack and stuff like that and I don't really know if that's a good thing uh, yeah so finding finding a guitar a jazz master in the right price bracket is extremely difficult so we have the squires we have the Mexican problematic ones and then we have the American ones right which is basically double the price of the Mexican right and uh, the Mexican is double the price of the squires then, of course, we have the Japanese models as well. These are difficult to talk about. I mean, they're more available in the US and in Australia than they are in Europe, from what I've noticed. We basically only get the hybrid two models. 
yeah, they're difficult to find. And they sit between the Mexican and the American like in price. So, I mean, they feel pretty good uh, price-wise. I could buy one of those. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like the Mexican fenders have no real place anymore. Like either you go the cheap route and you buy a Squire, which are fairly expensive now. They're $550 or $600, stuff like that. And I feel like that was the money you used to pay for a Mexican one, kinda, right? $650, $700 for a Mexican one. Now you pay $1,100 instead. So yeah, it's really awkward price for the Mexican models. And I feel like I could maybe justify it if they just switch to either Rosewood that everybody wants, go back to that, or maybe even go Indian Laurel because it just looks better. Once you put some lemon oil or, you know, something like that on it, it just looks really good and it plays really good. So I don't see the point of not using it actually. Yeah, it's so awkward to buy a Mexican guitar now. And I feel like it's a problem because you spend that amount of money and if you don't want to keep the guitar, you lose a bunch of money. <laughs> Because they're awkwardly priced, right? As soon as you sell a Mexican Vintera, it's like, I don't know, 40% just, you lose you lose 40% of the value or something. It's yeah, it's really awkward. I, would, I don't know if I would buy one. It's really weird. So now I have this problem where either I would have to go buy a Squire and mod it, or go and buy an American Pro which could be fine, I guess. I don't know, I don't know. It's really weird, everything's really weird. It's difficult to buy one now. So what would I have to do? I would have to buy used, right? That's what you kind of have to do now. You have to find a good, worthy Mexican guitar, maybe, um, that has the rosewood board like you used to, um, or buy a used Japanese, maybe. Because you can't find the American used. You can find them, but they're crazy expensive. Get the Jazzmaster 62 AVRI one, and it's like $300, 300 and it's like $3,000. It's even more expensive, because those were so good. So yeah, now, it's really difficult. It's really difficult. I've been trying to find a good Jazzmaster for a while now. And I don't know, should I just build my own? Value-wise, it's stupid, right? I've been talking about value for guitars for a long time, but value-wise, it's stupid. But at least I get what I want, right? I get I get the body I want, the color I want. I get a nice neck with a rosewood board. Yeah, and, and the radius I want, stuff like that, right? But yeah, it's really damn difficult. And I mean, jazz master players, they don't most of them keep their guitars because they're really specific players too. They really love the Jazzmaster and nobody sells them. So uh, yeah, that's the thing too. You can't find them used. Yeah. So my biggest problem with Fenders right now are the Mexican models. I feel like they have no place. They're too expensive for what they are. Nobody likes Paul Farrell Fender. Please go back to Rosewood now when you can, please. Or are you tr actively trying to force people to buy the American line? I would assume so. I would assume so. Because it's either, either the Squires, and you have to upgrade them to make them playable, or you buy an American. Because the, the Mexican versions doesn't cut it anymore. Damn. Yeah, it's really difficult. So what I want to know from you guys have you played Pau Ferro? Do you like it? It's it's really difficult. Everybody I talk to hate it. Or think it's like, it's okay, it's not the best. I still paid $1,200 for a guitar with the fretboard I don't like, which is stupid. I don't know, I don't know. It's just me ranting, I guess. It's been on my mind for quite some time now, since I've been off and trying to find a new guitar, basically. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I have a new guitar coming from the US that I will review pretty soon. So yeah, uh, like and subscribe and all that stupid shit. I'll be here, check back with me when I post the next one. Yeah, I think that's it. Talk soon.